it's time. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Becca's Book Nook. Today we are doing our Chain of Thorns book talk. If you know me and are not new to this channel, you know that I have a massive obsession with the Shadowhunter books. I had been reading the Shadowhunter Chronicles since probably the seventh grade, which was, what, 2013? It's been, wow. <laughs> These books have been a part of my life for 10 years, so it's a big deal for me when there's a new release. Chain of Thorns was no different, especially because we have waited for this book for two years. The last book, Chain of Iron, came out March 2021, so it has been... A while it's been almost two years and I'm not gonna say I was disappointed but it's not my favorite Shadowhunter book that's ever come out and I am gonna say I was disappointed actually I gave this book four out of five stars because it's a Shadowhunter book and I still loved it I love the characters all that but for the end of a trilogy for a book that we've been waiting for for so long I do have some questions some complaints and we're just gonna get into all of that in this video i'm hoping it's not going to be too long but i do have seven pages of notes <laughs> and a ton of things to talk about so without further ado let's just get right into it obviously this is going to be a spoiler filled video if you haven't read this book or any of the trilogy probably don't watch this video but go ahead and read it and come back and we can talk about it together after First thing that I want to say about this book is that Alistair and Thomas are the loves of my life. I had so much fun reading about their little love story. They were my my favorite part of this book. Every scene that they were in just made me like scream. I have so many notes that are just like, yes, Thomas and Alistair or like Thomas and Alistair are so dear to me. And Alistair is just so like near and dear to my heart. Like his redemption arc, it's just everything to me. And him and Thomas are just so perfect for each other. I loved reading everything about their story. Second to that, Anna and Ari are amazing. I love them. Their story was so cute. But I just feel like we could have gotten a little bit more depth with them. We never really got to see them like overcoming their issues that they were facing in the first two books. They were just sort of like over it and didn't have any like deep chats about it other than like that they loved each other and then they're just happy together. And I feel like we could have had some more depth some more conversations between the two because I loved them so much um but I wish that we did get just a little bit more content there maybe starting just right at the beginning of the book I knew that Paris was a bad idea I knew exactly how James was gonna find Cordelia and Matthew I knew he was gonna walk in on them kissing or something of that nature I literally knew that I'm pretty sure I said it in my chain of thorns my chain of iron book talk that he was gonna walk in on them in Paris see them kissing and all hell was gonna break loose I just knew it was gonna happen so when that happened like obviously I was I was upset but I was not surprised um I knew Matthew had to have still been drinking uh she he obviously didn't want Cordelia in her room because there was the beer the booze bottles in there like it's it was just no surprise there but it was still very painful to read and reading Matthew being so upset was really hard for me to read because Matthew was is one of my favorite characters of this trilogy I did think for a good portion of the book that he was gonna die. I texted my friend and I was like, realistically, there's another fair child that can, you know, carry on the family name and Matthew doesn't really need to be here for it. <laughs> so he, what if he dies? And I was just sort of prepared for him to die, but it would have broken me. I don't even wanna get into the death yet. So we're gonna save that for later, but watching Matthew be upset was really, really hard to read um and him trying to get sober was really hard to read really difficult topic to cover in this book but I'm glad that we got to see it it's an important topic to cover so um yeah it was amazing the love triangle did feel very recycled uh it was basically just hair and gray stairs all over again to be honest um even down to Matthew and Cordelia going to a bridge in Paris. It was very reminiscent of Blackfriars Bridge for Jem and Tessa, with James then being the Will character of the love triangle. So um, any doubt in my mind that Cordelia was not going to end up with James was um, resolved when that scene happened because it was just very reminiscent of a scene we've already seen. Continuing on with um, James and Cordelia a little bit, uh, they were amazing in this book, but the frickin' bracelet was still haunting us even when it was gone. For a good portion of the book, 
what how long did it take for him to tell about the bracelet like a half the book like it was still haunting us for so long and in, I'm just screaming just tell her about the bracelet tell her about the bracelet I know you're upset but Cordelia's gonna understand tell her about the bracelet like you're literally making each other upset by not sharing this truth and it just needs to get out in the open I was literally screaming with joy when Grace finally told Cordelia and she knew the truth and then the smut let's just say I was not prepared for how steamy this book got Cassandra Clare really said, well, if Sarah J Maas can do this in her young adult series, so can I. And she went off. She did pop off. The sex scenes were really intense in this book. I was, yep, kill it. Cassie Clare, very well written, very unexpected, but not complaining. They were very well written. And I was just screaming for joy when that happened. The Him shooting the gun at the door was hilarious. And I was just so happy that they were finally together. Cassie Clare did freak me out a little bit there. I really thought that James was going to die for a second. And I made a note. It says, if James dies, I'll kill Cassie Clare. Then the next note, I, f I hate you, Cassie Clare. And then the next note, okay, you're good, babe. Don't worry about it. <laughs> because I should have known that he was obviously not going to die. But I just had no idea, like, what the plan was. Like, I knew that Cordelia was gonna, I, I kind of figured that Cordelia was gonna stab him and then they would heal him with Cortana because the blade can fix or heal whatever damage it's caused, but I guess it was very like Harry with the Horcrux in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. like when he was killed, just the Horcrux part of him was killed and not actually him, and it was very like that, I guess, when James stabbed himself, he just killed the Belial part of him and not actually him, so... That was good, obviously. I did have a brief moment of panic though, so I was happy that nothing actually happened. Moving on to a little bit of a Lucy and Jesse. I loved their dynamic throughout this whole book. Um, I really was confused at how this was gonna work out. I said that they're, right from the beginning, I made a note that said, um, Jesse and Lucy are cute, but how is this possibly gonna work out? Um, especially when she started like seeing Belial's realm or whatever she was seeing when they were being intimate and I was like how the hell is this possibly gonna work out I don't know but everything worked out they fixed it it's fine I feel like I don't really have a ton to say about them because they were just they were cute throughout um I don't know I feel like there's not there wasn't like I don't really have a lot of notes on uh Jesse and Lucy other than I really enjoyed Jesse's character um I enjoyed seeing Lucy's growth throughout um, and with her power and everything. She's very powerful. Obviously, she fixed, like, one of the massive issues at the end of the book. Like, she's in ridiculously powerful, the Herondales are. Um, and I liked seeing Jesse sort of training and working his way up and showing that he can help when people thought that he was incapable of doing so. So that was really cool to see and slay Jesse for that. He did a great job and I'm happy that they, everything worked out and they're together. Will Herondale throughout this whole book just reminded me of how much I love this man and why I got a tattoo for him. He is literally everything to me, my favorite male character of any media of all time. No one will ever top Will Herondale. He was so funny this entire book. He's always funny. Dad, like Dilf Will Herondale is just <laughs> something else. Um, I have a couple him getting in trouble for singing at the table. Like he's he's just like me. He literally is me. We're soulmates. Um, him telling the story in the carriage like, um, of him on Xanthos Rebellios, I forget which horse it was, going to find Tessa and Clockwork Princess and Magnus being like, I'm surprised you don't know the story, haven't, haven't heard the story. And he's like, yeah, not since last Thursday or something like that. And it's just like, he's constantly showing his love for Tessa and he's such a good father and I just love him. He's so funny. I loved how many like little images we got to see of him throughout this book and just him and Tessa also just making sure that their kids aren't doing like inappropriate stuff in the institute and they're like as if you didn't do anything like this when you were younger and they're like yeah we did this is why we don't want you having the door closed or whatever. It's so funny and just like a great little tidbit for her to add in. Okay I guess we all knew this was coming so I guess I will now get into Grace and Christopher. I have a note on my very first page of notes that says Christopher and Grace are so gonna end up together 
because Cassie really decided to build up this insanely cute relationship between these two characters, finally give Grace hope that she has someone in her life that cares about her, doesn't wish her any harm, is willing to forgive her for all of her wrongdoings, only to then kill him off for literally no purpose whatsoever. Christopher's death came out of actually nowhere for me. I have so many notes just saying, what's going on? This isn't real. They're going to use time travel to get him back. And it's not even like Christopher is one of my favorite characters. Like, I think he might, he's, he's my, like, my fourth favorite out of the Merry Thieves. Like, he's my least favorite of the Merry Thieves, and I, but I loved him still. But it's just the fact that she decided to build up this relationship with him and Grace to the point that I'm, like, tearing up over their conversations or really just feeling things about them only to kill him off for literally no purpose like what was the purpose of killing Christopher off I, I genuinely don't know I think maybe just because there's two reasons she just felt like she had to kill someone off because it's the last of a trilogy and she felt like she needed to actually three reasons because I saw a tweet that was like the Lightwoods really can't ever have more than two kids existing at the same time that's really sad but it's so true and the third reason just so that we build more empathy for Grace as a character did she kill Christopher off just so that we as the readers felt more empathy for Grace and didn't hate her and just maybe actually liked her? Because I was already doing that without you killing him off. So it was ridiculous, super unnecessary to me. Um, and I literally thought that he was not actually dead. I thought we were going to do some time travel, weird stuff, something fantastical to get him back. And we didn't. This line in particular really built up the relationship for me. This was early on probably like 150 pages in. Grace says, this was probably the first smile she'd really smiled since, well, since the last time she'd seen Christopher. He's the only one bringing her joy, the only one bringing her happiness. I felt a lot of like, I felt bad for Grace throughout this whole book because you can tell that she wants to absolve her sins, her bad things that she's done in the past. And she actually is really trying really hard. She wants to be better. She wants to be good for Christopher. And then they killed her they killed them off and then she's left with no one thank god that people finally forgave her at the end but like realistically who is she gonna spend time with now jesse's with lucy who is she gonna does she end up with anyone we can't trust the family tree oh and don't even get me started on this stupid family tree business we've had this family tree since clockwork princess i have done everything in my power to avoid this family tree okay that's why I had no idea who Cordelia was actually going to end up with. There was just as good of a chance of her ending up with Matthew in my head as there was her ending up with James because I had not seen this family tree. But unfortunately, I did get spoiled watching one of Christine uh, at Pull and Banana Books videos where she revealed that Christopher and Grace end up together. And I was really confused. I was like, this doesn't make any sense, but I'm assuming we're going to work up to it. Only for us to find out that this family tree is just one of the characters ways of it's just a way to confuse the readers like I was so confused at what the purpose of that was like did she just realize that the family tree wasn't going to work out so she changed it or has this plan been in her head the whole time I just don't the whole thing is very confusing to me Christopher's death made no sense to me I've said it a million times the scene where he comes back as a ghost briefly to help Grace realized that she knows the answer to the fire messages made me really emotional. I did cry throughout that scene because she just, she, they needed more time. It's like right person, not enough time. It really sucked to read. Um, yeah, it's just very emotional and it's upsetting that that's the character's fate. Moving on a little bit to Tatiana Blackthorne, I guess. I was shook out of my mind when Cordelia killed her. I was actually lost. Like I did not expect that at all. Her stealing the baby, like, um, was really giving me one of the Mortal Instruments books, I feel like. I don't really remember what I'm thinking of, but it felt reminiscent of something that's already happened before. Oh, no, it was TDA, um, The Dark Artifices, Lady Midnight, when they took, uh, Tavy, when Malcolm took Tavy. That's what it reminded me of. Um, anyway, Tatiana was really weird. I was confused the whole book about what was going on with her. I was like, is this a ruse? Is she possessed? What's going on? So confused. It was good. It was clever. Like they, she did, Cassie did a good job writing Tatiana, but Tatiana's whole revenge plot is just so stupid. Like, I don't even, 
I just don't even understand like where her ammunition is coming from why she hates the Herondales and the Carstairs and the Lightwoods so much like that's literally your brothers but okay I'm not really sure whatever she's bitter it's fine all kind of weird to me in the long run but the main thing that I want to say is that I was really really surprised that Cordelia killed her especially when I thought that she was going to get in trouble from everyone else because they could have used Tatiana for more information but no one just really seemed to care everyone was just sort of happy that she was dead so I was a little bit lost about that but anyway um and when Tatiana took Grace's power I was also confused because I thought that Grace was going to help everyone out by somehow manipulating one of the like um one of the people uh, like Belial or something somehow but she took it away um, my phone did run out of space so I had to borrow my roommate so sorry if the lighting is different but I'll just try and wrap this up I don't even know how long I've been filming for basically what I was gonna say before I was cut off is that the one thing that was super random and weird to me in this book was the whole um Ari's dad like the inquisitor blackmailing Charles felt like it was a really big deal at the beginning and I thought that that was gonna have something to do with like Belial's plan but like it didn't really I feel like about like Charles being gay and all that stuff and I feel like it just didn't really have like an overarching like like I feel like it just was kind of unnecessary and didn't really add anything to the overall plot um you know obviously it's good that Charles is out and all the gays are out and happy <laughs> and confident in themselves and all that but I feel like it didn't really end up tying into the overall like big theme of the book which was confusing to me and I guess the main sort of I guess it sort of tied into the whole like um the clave finding out that the Herondales are related to Belial and them having to go to Idris and for that whole thing and then I don't know it just it, yeah it was very some of this book was very like random and it felt like there was just random stuff trying to get the adults out of the way so that the kids could deal with the issues and like the adults didn't really have to go away the clave was just like really pissing me off in this book like obviously they have no contact with Belial like I don't understand how whatever the clave's always been stupid but I feel like I'm not making any sense but that was just one part that I was kind of like eh, this is really weird and didn't really fit into the overall like theme of the book but now James and Matthew are in Edom when they're in taken away and Matthew like came with him and he was like you didn't have to follow me and he was like whither thou goest and James was like I don't think that means going into a demon realm he goes I think that literally does mean going to a demon realm that was funny I love their relationship the pair Bataille. I love that they were able to heal their relationship through the whole Cordelia ordeal I'm happy that everything is sorry my laptop is like reflecting my glasses I'm happy that everything worked out with all that it was really upsetting seeing Matthew like having his seizures because of his withdrawal from alcohol and obviously I knew that James was gonna let Belial possess him because to save Matthew and all that James is just phenomenal of course he was gonna do that um I loved Cordelia and Lucy trying to figure out how to get to Edom to see them. I loved when they were having their conversation and Lucy said, I have a problem. And Cordelia said, a necromancy problem? And she said, no, a kissing problem. <laughs> that made me laugh. And they were such baddies summoning Lilith and then Lucy summoning the ghost to make up the pentagram. That was iconic. They're just so powerful and such badasses. Obviously, them saving Matthew was iconic. And the final battle was just really well done, in my opinion. I thought it was really good. The unkillable demon-possessed Silent Brothers and Iron Sisters was really giving me Clockwork Army, especially when they just, like, couldn't be killed like normal. And they had to, like, figure out how to properly kill them. And they had to find the rune at the back of their head and everything. That was it just really giving me Clockwork Army. So I did feel like that was a little bit of a rinse-repeat sort of thing. But I liked that she found a way to make it unique and cool and that was really cool that like when Lucy could summon the spirits and make them sort of like push the demons out of them that was really cool Lucy's a bad bitch that was awesome obviously Cordelia tricking Lilith was iconic um that was so cool that she was like I never said I would be the one to kill I just said he would die by my blade and you better get me out of this contract bitch that was awesome super cool um moving on to sort of like the end of the book is where everything sort of started going downhill for me I'm not really sure why we had like 30 pages of just them like throwing stuff into a coffin and 
it just felt very like open-ended to me and that's not really how I like my epilogues to be like the dream ideal epilogue is Clockwork Princess where we find out the kids that they had how like Will dying obviously it's heartbreaking but that's like what I want to see like that's a nicely wrapped up tied with a bow ending that's what I want this was super open-ended for like a trilogy epilogue it felt super weird to me the coda chapter what the hell was that what what was that like obviously she must be coming back to I'm assuming Belial is gonna be one of the bad guys in Wicked Powers because if he doesn't come back in Wicked Powers then that makes literally no sense to me the whole chapter was super weird there's a new Belial a part of me thought that she was going to reveal that like Belial came back and manifested himself in Valentine or something and that's what that chapter was for but she didn't say anything and it just felt super weird and random and didn't make any sense and I literally just wrote what the f what, what WTF was that coda chapter about I'm confused because I was and them throwing stuff into the coffin just felt like super unnecessary to me and like we could have been spending those pages talking about something more important or tying it up better more properly just not cool to me it was interesting finding out why Bridget lived so long because I was really confused at how like a mundane with a sight lived all the way from the infernal devices to the dark artifices I was like super lost so that's cool that we get to find out why she lasts and lives so long so that was cool I guess but once again that just seemed sort of like thrown in there as an afterthought um it was just very out of nowhere and like yeah cool she ended up like killing some demons or whatever but it was just very random and out of nowhere for me last but not least I feel like I missed some stuff that I wanted to talk about the fire message was the fire messages were really cool getting to see grace becoming a badass and proving that she can do something useful to the fight even if it's not necessarily fighting was really cool her getting the fire messages to work was amazing with the whole Christopher ordeal and that was awesome um I loved seeing what was I gonna say oh I loved that Matthew got his got to share his story with Charlotte and Henry and got to relieve that off his chest because he needed to for so long and hopefully that's gonna help in his endeavors to give up drinking for good and it was just really exciting to see him finally get that off his chest though once again it was very thrown in there as an afterthought I almost would have liked to see some more of that like it was nice that James went with him but it felt sort of like oh I forgot to add this in so I'm gonna do it now I didn't <sighs> the ending was just so upsetting to me I know I just said that but Matthew's going away where is he going uh <laughs> Anna and Ari, are they going to adopt a baby? Are, are they going to? Thomas and Alistair, are they going to adopt a baby? Who does Grace end up with? Who does Matthew end up with? Are James and Cordelia going to have a baby? It, there's just so many questions that I want to know the answers to. Like, I just, there's so many things that I still don't have answered. And that, like, really bugs me at the end of a trilogy. I think I heard something about her maybe releasing, like, some short stories or something. But, like, when? Like, when are they going to be out? Like, I have questions now. Like, I don't really want to wait. I mean, we'll see. Finally, the last thing I want to mention, if I forgot anything, I'll write it in the description or talk about it in my next video. But the ending where... Lucy is talking about the book she wants to write and she says she's going to shorten the name and the name is The Wicked Powers. My brain is just racked and like going on a wild run like is The Wicked Powers going to somehow be revealed to not be a real story and it was all just written by Lucy or something weird like that? Otherwise why would she say that? That it was going to be called The Wicked Powers? I don't know. And it stresses me out that there's someone named Kit and she could have like, Kit's going to be a massive part of the Wicked Powers. And I'm like, Kit was Christopher's nickname. Is this just a book that she wrote and Kit's one of the main characters? It's just, it's stressing me out thinking that it might be revealed at the end that the Wicked Powers is just a book that Lucy wrote. Like that's just like, and maybe my brain is just like working weirdly. But if that's a thing, I'm going to be pretty, I'm going to be pretty upset about it. Okay, just a few last minute things that I wanted to mention. Malcolm in this book was absolutely crazy. Um, it was so like interesting seeing him just 
really gearing up to raise Annabelle and seeing his backstory and how he's just so focused. The only thing on his mind is raising Annabelle from the dead and it just continues on for centuries and centuries and centuries. And then when the man finally does raise her, she kills him. It's just like this man really focused centuries. Okay, maybe not like maybe like a century on bringing this woman back from the dead only for her to kill him as soon as she gets risen it's just crazy and it was really interesting seeing a little bit of his backstory and him wanting lucy to do this favor for him and then she just doesn't thank god lucy but it was interesting sort of seeing his backstory and his villain like origin story sort of also a couple lines that i wanted to bring attention to um there's one line where lucy and jesse are like making out and she's trying to like get to the shadow world and she's like oh this isn't working and he's like speak for yourself <laughs> that made me laugh um tessa was so cute in this book i loved when lucy she was doing lucy's hair and lucy was like this is my favorite part of these parties is you doing my hair that was so cute sona or sonia i don't know how sauna i don't know how to say it i don't want to mess it up knowing that alistair is gay and doesn't care and wants him to let Thomas love him as he should it was really cute I loved it um and Matthew the last thing I want to say is when Matthew says the line am I so hard to love to Cordelia it broke my heart like my heart just I felt it break I felt it shatter a little bit very relatable very heartbreaking uh, this is still when I was very set on the fact that Matthew is gonna die and I was it broke my heart but everything's fine it seems. We don't really know what's going on. We don't know where Matthew's gonna end up. We don't know where any of these people are going. If she is writing short stories, I hope they get released like soon so that these questions aren't just in my head for so long and they get answered soon. But we'll see. We don't really know, I guess. I feel like I talked about pretty much everything that I did want to talk about. As long as you guys took away from this that Alistair and Thomas are the best part of this book and James and Cordelia are insanely amazing and I love them then um that's pretty much all you need to, to gain from this video overall like four out of five stars but it, leaning more towards like a 3.5 just because i was slightly disappointed in the ending um but yeah overall great book great writing Sandra claire can do no wrong in my eyes it was just slightly disappointing um no idea when wicked powers is gonna come out so i don't know like when i should be expecting another shadow hunters book and it makes me nervous because I'm just getting older and it makes me emotional that I don't know like when the next book is going to come out or how old I'm going to be when it comes out or when I should be looking forward to them but we'll see. I will stick with these books for the rest of my life and I hope you guys enjoyed reading this and enjoyed watching my video. Feel free to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. I try to post every ish Wednesday <laughs> bookish content that you don't want to miss. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!